he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And when he said, Come, and he said, Come, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Amen. But when he was saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Amen. We thank God for the holy divine word. You may be seated. We thank God. Amen. That the word of God is clear. That Jesus is still the answer to all of our fears. Amen. I don't care what we're afraid of. Jesus is the answer to our fears. Son, we, we, dealt, we, we spoke about how we, how we had to face it, trace it, erase it, and then replace it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And, and that works with all of our fears, okay? Uh, we need to first face it that we have that fear. It is what it is. I'm afraid of this thing, you know? But you know, what does this fear come from? What does it stem from? The root of my fear. That's called tracing it, finding out where it comes from. And then when we find out where it comes from, now we can erase it. Now we can get rid of it. You know, because we'll talk, a lot of times people, we cut weeds all the time in our grass. We cut the weed down. But what happens? The weed grows right back. Come on, somebody. Because we didn't deal with the root. And a lot of times, that's what happens in our lives. We, we, we cut stuff down, but it comes right back. Why? Because we didn't deal with the root. People, the gardeners know that they get out there on their knees, and they, they pull up the weed from the root. They pull it up. Instead of cutting it, they pull it up. And when they pull it up from the root, they know it can't come back then. Come on, somebody. Amen. So we need to face it, trace it, then we can erase it. And then, most importantly, we must replace it with something else. Amen. We have to fill that void. And that void has to be filled with the faith of God. Amen. In this text here, we see that a familiar passage where Jesus walked on the water. Peter says, Lord, let me come walk on the water. Peter God, Jesus says, come. Peter begins to what? Walk on the water. He does the impossible. But then, like most of us do, we, he began to doubt. Jesus told him, it, he said, what for this doubt, doubt? This is why you really sink, because you begin to doubt what you were already doing. <sighs> and you have the believers now in our lives, the people that can see us do things that are extraordinary or supernatural or do things with the Lord and they'll they'll always remember your failures but they won't remember your successes people will remember how you sank but they won't remember how you walked on water they won't remember how many steps you took on the water doing the impossible, but they always remember that you sank. Yeah, you walked on water, but you sank. So we, we need to quit, we need to get over our fear of people and what people have got to say, because folk will always say this and say that. The same folk that pump you up today, next week, they'll be bringing you down. Amen, somebody. I, I, I knew we weren't going to make it. I, I, t I knew, I told y'all. So we can't be worried about folk. We can must say we keep our focus on who? On Jesus. Our focus on the Lord. Write this down, note takers. Fear paralyzes. Anybody ever been scared? There, there's a phrase called scared stiff. You were so scared you couldn't move. You couldn't, you couldn't say nothing. You couldn't move. Fear can paralyze us. Doubt neutralizes us. Doubt causes us to what? Do absolutely positively nothing. Because we doubt, 
things or we doubt situations or people, we just don't do nothing about it. Doubt neutralizes us, causes us to do nothing. We don't go forward, we don't go backwards. We do nothing. Unbelief sterilizes us. Unbelief sterilizes us. When something is sterile, that means it cannot produce. It cannot produce. And when, and when unbelief, we can't produce anything in the kingdom because everything in the kingdom is produced through faith. And if you're living and walking in unbelief, you cannot produce anything. Nothing will manifest in your life in unbelief. Fear paralyzes, doubt neutralizes, unbelief sterilizes, and faith energizes. Faith energizes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and I can do it because of my faith in Christ. Come on, somebody. So faith energizes me. The more faith I have, the more energy I have in the kingdom of God to do things. And when you don't have faith, that's when we fall into a place of doing nothing for God. We don't have the power. Without faith, we have no power in the kingdom of God. Throughout the Bible, you find out what Jesus tells them. He says, he said, fear not, be not afraid. You're fine. Fear not and be not afraid in the Bible 365 times. You'll find that. Fear not, be not afraid. 365 times. That's a whole lot of be fear not and be not afraid. Come on, somebody. That means that the Lord knows that we're going to have some fear. Amen, somebody. Everybody here got some fears, including me. I'm still dealing with some of mine, too. Listen to me. Everybody got some fears, but we got to learn how to face our fears so we can overcome these fears because we are more than conquerors. What? Who? In Christ. Amen. He tells Joshua, be courageous and be not afraid of them. Who is them? Our adversaries, everybody that's up against us. Folk that don't like you. Folk above you. Your bosses. We're not supposed to be afraid of them. Because they can't do no more to us than God allowed. This is the understanding we must have in the kingdom. I respect you, but I'm not afraid of you. I don't fear what you can do to me. The Lord says, have no fear in man who can destroy just the body. But have fear in God who can destroy both your body and your soul. In hell, we, we got our fear misplaced. We should be fearing God, not folk. Because you may be to beat me up, but I heal up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you, you may hurt me for a while, but I'll be all right. I'll, I'll, I'll heal up. But what God can put on us, you know. I remember a man telling me a story once. I'm trying to remember exactly how it went, but. He said he grew up afraid of his father because the only interaction he ever had with his father, Bro Harris, was when his father beat him. His father never took time to, you know, take him out to a ball game, he said, never took time to take him fishing, never took time out to, you know, just try to teach him how to be a man or anything like that. And he said he feared his father because the only interaction he ever had with his father was through getting beaten. And he found that that made it hard for him to even submit his life unto God. Listen to me. Because in the Bible he said God is always referred to as a father. And the image he had as a father was somebody that just beat me. 
And I said that to say this to us as parents, we have to be careful how we treat our children because how we treat our children could determine how hard it is for them to receive God into their life. We have the responsibility to love our children so that they can be able to more freely receive the love of God. And I found that story, that, 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 that story touched me and it made me thank God for the father that I had that, that, that didn't just beat me but showed me love by, by spending time with me and, and doing things for me and getting things for me and showing me that he loved me. Yeah, I got some whoopings, but they were out of love. Amen. And we need to understand that God sometimes going to whoop us, but it's going to be what? For he said, whom he loves, he chases. He whoops. He, he punishes because he loves us. Amen. So we're supposed to have that fear of God, but it's supposed to be because it's supposed to be a reverence. It's not a terrifying fear that we're supposed to have of God. It's supposed to be a respect and a reverential fear of God to know that, look, God loved me, but I know God will give my butt too. Amen, somebody. That's, that's the fear that keeps us out of a lot of trouble. I know, uh, you know, so, so anybody know that them whoopings, you know, after a while, you go to thinking about them whoopings. And that last whooping will keep you out of trouble for a good little while. So come on, somebody. Because it's fear fresh on your mind, and you might still have a couple of whips from new switches. So you'd be like, man, I ain't finna, man, I ain't finna do that. I just got through getting a whooping. I, you know, so these kind of things, sometimes when, when, when punishment comes into our lives, you know, God is trying to put a little godly fear into us. Amen. Because when you, when you, not, when you, when you don't fear, you do about anything. But see, I, I, I grew up, I grew up, and I went to school with some dudes that I called crazy, but I found out they wasn't crazy. They just didn't have fear of stuff. That's why they would just do just about anything. I mean, crazy stuff, you know, like jumping off the second floor. I see folk do that kind of stuff. But man, you don't believe I jump off? Man, no, nah, y'all need to Fear makes, you know, the lack of fear makes us do crazy and dumb things. Let's look at Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. And I'm almost through. Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. We're going to look at some scriptures where, where God says, look, be not afraid. And don't fear them. Even don't fear what they're saying. Because remember Sunday we talked about how fear enters in? By what we see, what we hear, and even what we imagine. We can think up some fear. Amen, somebody. Deuteronomy 20, verse 1, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots, and the people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Romans 31, 8 and 31 says something very important. Romans 8 and 31, can we get to that? I think that's the right scripture. Romans 8 and 31. What then shall we say to these things? What things? Whatever I'm dealing with. What then shall we say to these things? What things? I don't care what it is. This is what I'm going to say to my problem. This is what I'm going to say to my bills. Listen to me. What then shall we say to these things? This is what I'm going to say to my illness. This is what I'm going to say to my sickness. This is what I'm going to say to my heartache, my trouble, my stress. If God be for us, who, what, when, where, who, that covers it, can be against And how I know God is for me, because I'm for him. Oh, somebody ought to miss that. The how I know God is for me, because I'm for him. And he said, if I draw nigh to him, If, if he on my mind, if I'm on his mind, if he on my mind, I'm on his mind. Are y'all with me? If I'm making myself available for him, he's making himself available for me.
So we're in tonight, crew. You showing God you for him. I'm talking real stuff now. Because believe me, he keeping record, he keeping count. He know who more faithful, who not. He know who's sitting at home watching TV and could be at church. He know all this stuff. If God be for me, it'll make no difference what's against me. I don't have to fear nothing. I don't have to be afraid of nothing. Nothing is going to overcome me because God is bigger than anything I can confront. Come on, somebody. And, and sometimes, um, you don't need who you think you need. The moment we get in situation sometimes, our mind automatically begin to go to who we need. We trying to figure stuff out, you know. You know, and, and, and sometimes, like it, you know, thinking too much on a thing can create create that doubt. Sometimes we can think too long. Amen. And doubt will creep in. <sighs> you know, sometimes, like I said, we don't. You don't need who you really think you need. And we have to be careful not to put our trust in, in too much in man. Because when we do that, what we do is we set ourselves up for hurt and disappointment. Because I don't care how much somebody loves you, they can't always be there for you. They ain't always be able to come through for you. That's why we need to learn how to have our trust and our faith in who in God. This is why Jesus said, He said profoundly, one verse, He says, Have faith in God. Not even Him, He said. He said, you have faith in God. Not what you ask God for, you ask him in my name, but your faith is in God. Come on, somebody. Jesus didn't send himself. He was sent by someone else. He was sent by the Father. He was sent by God. So God is where all of our supply, all of our power, that's where it comes from. It comes through Jesus, but it comes from God. So our faith should be who? Well, in God. My faith is in God. However, I know whatever God going to get to me, he's going to get through me, to me through somebody on the earth. Amen, somebody. So I pray God bless me with this. I need this, the Lord, to take care of that. And he sends Brother so and -so, give it to me. Thank God for Brother so-and-so. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's coming from him. He's supplying all of our needs according to his riches and glories. Amen. I don't care who gave it to you. It wasn't none of theirs in the beginning. In Anyway, everything in the earth belongs to him. This is what he said. It all belongs to me. The money in your pocket belongs to him. That's why he needs somebody that'll say that that'll hear his voice and say, "Give that money to her." And I'm gonna take care of you, but she need that right now. I'll open up a window of heaven for you tomorrow if you obey me today. Joshua 1 and verse 9, he tells Joshua, be, be courageous, have courage, be not afraid of them. Because a lot of times, our bills are more than our income. And, and in the Bible, over and over again, every Bible you see, you'll see where they were outnumbered. Anybody ever felt outnumbered when it came to your money? Yeah. Yeah. Outnumbered, man. I yeah. Oh, somebody, I'm outnumbered. <laughs> man, I'm outnumbered, Lord. I it's more of them than it is of us. Woo! And over and over and again with Joshua, with Gideon, 
Come on, somebody. It, it, they was always outnumbered. And they were always trying to find out how to get more men. We always trying to find out how to get more money when we really all we need is more faith. We don't need more money. I'm trying to get you to see something. We don't need, we need more faith because he got all the money. Come on, he got all of them. So I don't need more. I need more faith, God, for you to deliver me. Gideon was like, Lord, there's 22,000 of them. I got 5,000. We already way outnumbered. God said, you got too many. Gideon, you got too many. And the first thing he tells them to do, he said, go to all of them that's afraid. And tell them to go home. <laughs> And that's like 2,000 right quick. <laughs> so he's still down. Now he's 3,000. He still got too many to get in. Go down to the brook, I don't you? All them that laugh like a dog. Send them home. So he ends up with 300 men to be and defeated 22,000. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. And if, and if he be for me, who can be against me? Now, I'm going to close with this tonight. Ezekiel 2, verse number 6. Amen. When's the night folks that come late? They're going to miss it, ain't you? Come. Ezekiel 2, verse number 6. What does it say? Read it. he says do not be afraid of their words twice he says that in this one scripture man forget what they say come on now you gotta be careful listening to what they say man they say a hell you messed up cause everybody got something to say everybody has an opinion everybody has a report I can ask every, you can ask everybody in here the same question, and everybody have their own opinion. And that don't mean that they wrong. <laughs> it's just their opinion. But when it comes to, <laughs> to us, we're supposed to always beware of who we take counsel from. Listen to me now. It, it, it makes no sense to ask, you know, a homeless person what I need to do to go about getting a house. just simply, you know, you know, asking, just simply talking to folk about God, folk that don't even go to church. Well, asking somebody to pray for you, you ain't never seen them pray before. Man, you better be careful talking about asking somebody to pray for you. Man, you don't know who they praying to. What they believe in. That's about me trying to put a curse on you.
Wow. Let's not be afraid of them, what they say. I wasn't there, but I imagine the, the, in, the, in the boat when, when Peter got out, I just imagined it. Some of them probably were saying, Peter, you need to get back in here, man. Back in this boat, man. What's wrong with you, man? You can't walk on wall. You ain't Jesus. It might have been people like he, Peter might have been like he, Peter might not have been able to swim like me. Be like, man, you can't even swim, man. Man, but Jesus told me. I don't need a, I don't need a life jacket because Jesus told me. And if he's told me, forget about what you're saying. I don't need you to believe God called me to preach. I don't need you to believe it. Because he called me. Don't worry about what they say. They ain't got nothing to do with what God want to do in your life. You just hear God and obey God. Sometimes you ain't gonna even be you you gonna have to cut your ears off to your husband and your wife. Y'all hear that? And you can't be mad there at them for not seeing it the way you see it, because God didn't speak it to them. If he wanted them to know, he'll let them know. You just do what he said do now. He'll fill them in later. You just do what he's. Because they'll be like, I don't see it. He ain't show it to you. I, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. You need to go back on that. Well, you know, Jesus said, Come, go. And have no fear of them. Because them can't do no more to you than the, that God allow. And if he allow it, then it's got to be something good. And it's because he said all things work together for good. Amen. And we'll deal with getting the folk out your boat later on. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, every head bow, every eye closed, please. Father, we thank you for this moment that you allow us to come and assemble around your word. And now, Father, we'd be remiss if we did not just give an invitation for someone to receive you into their heart tonight. So, Lord, now, we pray now that you begin to saturate hearts for anyone that has not truly received you, that they would have that opportunity to do so now. If you're here tonight and you never received Jesus into your heart, nobody's looking at you. If you want to receive him into your heart, you can do it tonight in the name of Jesus. If that's you, all you got to do is slip your hand up and say, that's me, I want to I want to receive Jesus tonight. That's me. I want him in my heart. I want him in my life. Because Jesus is truly the answer to all of our fears. And if you don't have Jesus in your life, then you should be afraid. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you should be afraid. Because you don't have his protection. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there may be someone else here that's saying, Pastor, look, I'm still dealing with some fears. Sunday, I dealt with something, but Lord, I got, I got some more fears that I need some help with. Come on down. I'm going to pray with you over your fears. Amen. You're fearful of this. You're fearful of what folk are saying. Come on, just be honest with yourself. I'm afraid this is going to happen. We don't want you to stay in fear because fear attracts the enemy. He smells that fear and he attacks. He comes. Fear gives him a crack. Give him the avenue to come into your life and into your home. And we want to get rid of that fear in the name of Jesus. There's going to come a day 
when we're going to be able to confess and say every day, no fear here in our hearts. It's going to be our confession when we wake up. Fear here. Where in my heart? Even though there may be something going on in my mind, it's not going to be in my heart. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. But you believe in God, believe also in me. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus is the answer. It's the answer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for these that are coming, Lord. And you already know what they're dealing with in their hearts and their minds concerning their, their being afraid. Or they're just doubting what's going on in this situation in their life, this season in their life. They're doubting the purposes and the promises. They're doubting the prophecy that has been spoken into their life. They're doubting that it's going to come to pass. Lord, in Jesus' name, I come into agreement with them that this fear, this, this unbelief be, be taken away from their hearts and their spirits and even from their minds. Let them not be troubled any longer concerning this issue, this issue in the name of Jesus. The issues of life have a way of coming, but Lord, you said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard. Father, we decree now in Jesus' name that the Spirit of the Lord is now raising up a standard against the adversary that's coming against them in the form of fear. In Jesus' name. Now that, that fear is being removed, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will release an overflow of faith into their hearts, that they will be able to know that you are for them, and whatever is against them cannot overcome them. I say whatever is against them cannot overcome them, in the name of Jesus, I decree it to be so, according to your word and according to your plan, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all stay right here. Y'all stay right here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Somebody come up here. Y'all come up here and hug these folk. Come on. Come Come here, some people. Come up here and just put your arms around. Come on. Come on now. They ain't got to go through this by themselves. Come on, somebody. We are family. What you're going through, you ain't got to go through by yourself. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're supposed to bear one another's burdens. This is what the Bible says. You've got to learn how to live out and be and live the word. Hallelujah. If you're unhappy, then that takes away some of my happiness. So I need to get you back into your joy. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love on them. Amen. We here. We family. Amen. All right, now y'all remember, we got to be going at 8 o'clock. Don't hug too much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 We got a testimony. We have a testimony on tonight. Come on, Sister Candace. Amen. I'm making sure because we got to be out here by 8 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Um, so Sunday, um, I talked to Officer Mario for us. He ran my name to see, see I had a ticket down here and I knew that I had a warrant but you know I continued to drive down here and by you know <laughs> by the grace of God I never got stopped or anything you know because my life is just you know suspended with driving down here in disobedience um, so he ran my name and everything and uh, the ticket was from like 
two years ago, and um, they had a one out for my wrist. It was a hundred and ninety dollars. Oh, you know, you know, he said that. I was like, okay, you know, cool. Maybe we can, you know, get down here and pay for that. Can you give me a court date? He was like, yeah. So when he got through talking to the people, he's like, it's seven hundred and ninety dollars. I was like, huh? And you know, like seven hundred and ninety dollars. Who has that right now? Uh, ever? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, just to give it to the, you know, the police department or whatever. So I'm stressing now because. He was like, your court date Monday, you know, be here between 9 and 10 so you can do your paperwork and, you know, you got you to see the judge at 1 o'clock. I'm like, okay. And what if, you know, he says you have half of the money, they're going to drop you one and let you go and put you on a payment plan or something. And I was like, okay. And what, you know, what if I have the money, you know, by Monday? He was like, uh, have to do your time. I was like, and how much is that? That's $40 a day. Do the math. That's like 20 days. It down here in Mariana where I don't know nobody. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> y'all ain't in jail, though. You know, like in jail, you know, y'all wouldn't be sitting in a cell with me or nothing. I had them in cell. Well, I'm not going to go down there for too long. It's going to be like a vacation, you know. I'll be at home in no time. You know, I wasn't looking at it that way. So uh, what am I going to do to get the money and stuff in? Um... And I told my friend, you know, um, I'm just going to go down there and do my time. Y'all just come visit me. Don't let me sit down in the whole two days. And y'all not come visit me or nothing. And I wasn't going to tell my homegirls. I was going to be like, you know, don't tell them. You know, I'll check later on let them know that I'm gone for a little while. He was like, nah, you you probably want to tell them. So I group messaged on Facebook, and I told them what was happening. They were like, oh, you stay on, you know, Twitter jail. We know you're going to be on jail <laughs> for real. <laughs> And, you know, that was like a big joke. So then my, my friend that she's already gone to uh, college, she texted me back um, and was like, well, you know, I have you $400 Friday, you know, just going down there and pay the bill. And I was like, well, you first I was like, you know, I can't take that money from you, you know, you in college and stuff. She was like, no, nah, don't worry about paying me back. If you can pay me back, pay me back. But if you can't, don't worry about it because, you know, we all to leave for college and I'm like wow one day time and I wasn't worried about it I told Lady Ross about she was like you had that Paul mentality like you was gonna be content with whatever happened because you know whatever God has for you it is for you like if you want to go and see it he's not gonna allow you to go down there and just sit there you know what I'm saying so um to God be the glory that I will have half the money to pay my ticket and you know maybe they can give me some community service or something the rest of it off, but I didn't have to worry about that. And God just really showed up and showed out this week, and I just want to tell y'all. Amen. Praise God. One thing I know about Kingdom Connection, you wouldn't have been sitting by yourself. We would have all been coming down there with you, you know, put this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I say this. We are a loving church. I don't know if y'all really caught the odds of that, cause, uh, but we are a loving church, and we ride or die together. Amen? Amen. We like Paul and Silas. If we're going to be in prison together, we're going to be in prison singing and praying. Amen. 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 Praise God. Welcome to Kingdom Connection Church, where Jesus is Lord. Here are your weekly announcements. Don't y'all leave me down there, though. You know, y'all come, come get me. <laughs> Kingdom Connection's prayer. Conference call. Submit your prayer. Last week we had like four, four people call in. Amen. It was like four of us. Wasn't it four? It was. I'm serious. Listen, and and I'm just gonna be real. We've been doing this like a year and a half now. We need prayer, man. I was always prayer. I know we got more than four. In the house. Amen. I have Pastor Jemerson in Chicago can call. I know we can, and we have to be praying. I mean. It's so much going on in the world. I mean, every time you turn around, someone got cancer, somebody house on fire, some something is going on, and we need prayer. There's no such thing as too much prayer. And it ain't but 15 minutes. At 10, 15, we out for that. Amen. So let's just get it in. Get it in. You know the number. We'll text you tomorrow night. We'll send out a text blast. You know, sometimes I get sleepy. Sometimes you get sleepy, but we got each other. Amen. So we're going to call in tomorrow night. Tune in to KJIW 94.5 at 845 every Sunday morning to Kingdom Perspective, our radio broadcast, where Apostle Ross, by way of the Holy Spirit, empowers the masses to live their life for Christ. 
faith comes by hearing the word of God. The month of June, we are asking members to bring food to restock our pantry. We're taking all items, perishable and non-perishable. We have the capacity to keep frozen foods as well as canned goods. Please bring your items. You yourself will eat. You can bring items to the church Tuesday through Thursday or the course on Sunday. Thanks in advance for supporting the ministry that supports you. To the pastor members of Kingdom Connections Church family, we the pastor members of the Pilgrim Rest MB Church cordially invite you to fellowship with us on this Sunday. It's our annual youth, it's their annual youth young adult. Our youth are going Sunday. We're asking that some of you that would listen, you pastor, don't send me by myself. Okay? Don't let me have to drive the van. Me have to watch your children. Me have to sit through the program. Me make sure they eat. Then me make sure they get home. Let's just keep it real, okay? I, I hate to keep fussing because I feel like I said the same thing over and over, but one day we're going to get there. Man, I'm always everywhere, amen? So come on and come with me and help, help me. <laughs> amen. <laughs> I did I said it was up here. <laughs> It is casual time for the summer months for Kingdom Connections Church, where Jesus is. Remember, it is not what you have on; it is what you. Ha- it is. Remember, it's not what. Remember, it's not what's what's in you. On you is what's in you. May last until September, if weather permits. It may last until September if weather permits. Throughout the next summer month, we are having casual sun. Amen. Our outreach is on summer break until July 16th. Amen. Okay. Pastor Ross needs to see our ministers and auxiliary heads Saturday, June 30th at 9 a.m. Asking that you please keep your feet off the back of the pews. Thank Kingdom. Kingdom Connections has begun a mission department, and meetings are held once a month. Monday at 530 in Hal Johnson Community Center. Wow, worship on Wednesdays. Intercessory prayer begins at 630. Worship begins at 7. Please come out and learn how to be God's disciple. Our birthdays for the month of June are Sister Tangie Turner, Sister Rosemary, Sister Linda Arnold, Justice Smith, Brother Alex Bray, Brother Tyler Perry, happy anniversary. <laughs> Ila Berry. <laughs> Amen. Happy anniversary, Minister Elias and Carolyn Hill. All right. We want to encourage our members to purchase a CD or a DVD of this service or a past service. We are called to be witnesses in the kingdom of God, so let's start by spreading the message one gospel at a time. Want to spread the gospel one message. I am really struggling with talking this evening, ain't I? <laughs> I would like to thank you, Kingdom Connections Church family. Amen. Y'all come back. I'm going to dismiss you. Uh, this Saturday, last Saturday, y'all will be exceedingly and abundantly again. Amen. We are a church family, and I love it when we come together. And I know Pastor Love it. It does make our ministry be one. Amen. And um, we held some people in this house. Amen. Brother Ross, you awesome on that grill back there. Amen. Amen. And thank you for the Father's Day. Amen. We thank you, Wonder Women. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God for you. And I know the family made 250 programs, and the programs never made it up here. So I know there had to be over 300 people in here. Amen. You're awesome. Give yourselves a hand. These are your weekly announcements. Please govern accordingly. Thank you again for attending this worship service. At Kingdom Connections Church, where Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Please thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey Amen. When 
I say unto one, I say unto all, be not afraid. God bless you.